All right, so today we have a very nice problem called compute all IP addresses from a raw IP string. Given a string with only numbers, restore the string to back to an IP address with all possible IP addresses that could have been brought from the string, that could have came from the string. So the thing is, imagine having an IP address, a regular IP address like that, and removing all the dots, and this is what we get. We need to go backwards in the process and generate all the original IP addresses and place the dots in it so that we get all the combinations. So here's an example of, here's an example of an input and then the answer. As you can see, we get a raw string with only integers. We place the dots here. You see here at the end, these differ. These are both valid IP addresses, and these are the only answers given this string of IP addresses that could be generated. Whenever we get a problem like this, always look for key words. As soon as you get a problem or interview questions, you need to be able to identify what tools are in my tool belt that I'm going to use for this problem. We immediately know that this is going to be something on the order of complete search or backtracking or some, some type of exhaustion of possibilities when we see this all possible when we see compute all when we see generate all all possible whenever we see that we know that we're going to be finding a exhaustion of a possibility space and backtracking is all about finding all the possibilities backtracking generating more possibilities based on three key things which we're going to look at now that we've got that down and we know we're going to do backtracking for this problem to generate these decompositions let's look at the approaches we can take to this problem all right so the key for this problem is to take snapshots of the string since we're using backtracking we're going to be exhausting all possibilities and generating each subsection and then exploring so we pick a subsection explore pick a subsection explore we'll see how we do that soon so whenever we're doing backtracking it's often a replacement for many nested for loops so what we could do is we could we're gonna have four subsections to our IP address we know that we could just use three or four nested for loops and generate each subsection we as long as we stay within our constraints and we generate each subsection correctly then when we get to the end and have four subsections we have a valid IP decomposition the constraints are we have to have um, we have to have each snippet be a value between 1 and 255 and no leading zeros in each section. So we're going to get into this when we talk about the constraints in generating our backtracking algorithm. So that's the first way. We could use nested for loops. But then there's the way where we could use recursion and backtracking. Going back to my end queens video, which is a great video, which is the basis for doing any backtracking problem, is the three keys to backtracking. I literally made this up. The way we're going to approach this is we're going to take snippets. So for example, we might take that snippet. And then we say, that's valid. We continue on. We take a second snippet. That's our second subsection. And then we continue on. And then we take that snippet. But that snippet is too long. Well, we would never take that programmatically, but say we did. That's too long. So we take that snippet. But that snippet is 511. We can't take that snippet. So we go back. And then we take that snippet. Well, this isn't how the code would advance through it. But theoretically, let's just imagine, like, this is, this is how backtracking would, like, try to exhaust possibilities. Okay, 51. And then we go. Take another snippet. And... We've done this, and so we've come this far, but we haven't advanced. We haven't advanced the whole length of the string. So we know we have four subsections, but we haven't decomposed the whole string. So we backtrack. So this is kind of how this problem is going to work. The key is taking snippets, taking snapshots of the string within our constraints. And when we get to the end, when, when our pointer is at the end of the string, our build, let's call it a build pointer, that's at the end of the string. And we have four subsections. We know we are finished. So let's get to three keys to backtracking. Again, that I talked in my end queens video, which is an amazing video covering backtracking and the fundamentals of that. The three keys to backtracking are, are, are three things. Our choice, our constraints, and our goal. Our choice, constraints, and our goal. So our choice is we're going to be taking snippets one to three digits long, validating each of those snippets before moving on. For example, we took this snippet, this snippet, this snippet. We're going to take snippets just like that. So that's, that's our choice. Our constraints are like I said before. We can't have a snippet that is longer. We can't have a four character long snippet. It has to be between the value of one and 255 and no leading zeros in that snippet. So that is where we would not even choose that and then explore. We would not even follow that path. And then our goal is to take four valid subsections 
and we know we're finished when we have four valid subsections and our build pointer is at the end. That means we've done all, we've exhausted all subsections up to this pointer of, 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 of cutting subsection. So here's how it'll really work. So when we start, we're going to have our building pointer right there. And we're going to take a snapshot this large. And then we're going to explore and do all our, all our other recursion on that. And then when we backtrack, get all the way to the top layer, we're going to come here. We're going to do that. Take a snippet that long. And then do our backtrack and come back. And then we'll take a snippet that long. And in our first level of recursion, that top level of recursion, those will be our three things that start off our recursion. So if it's almost like a tree that's kind of small, but our first choice would be two, next choice 25, next choice 255, and it would branch down, it would branch like a tree downward. So this is basically the approach we'll take to this backtracking problem. Um, our three keys, our choice, we're choosing snippets, our constraints, the value constraint, and the leading zero constraint, and then our goal, which is four valid subsections, and getting the, our build pointer to the end, meaning we exhausted the whole string, exhausted all of our combinations. So now let's look at the code and see how we would actually do this. All right, so here is the code in detail, and maybe there might be a tiny mistake, but I want you to understand the, the overarching ideas behind this, the ideas behind how we take a solution to the code for backtracking problems. So where does it all start? It starts, it starts at our driver, our driver function, that sets up, it sets up our path, sets up all the IP address possibilities that we're going to return, and we kick off our recursion. This is the play button. The driver hits the play button on our recursion. This is where we start. So our, we have our path that'll hold all of our answers. We, we pass in the raw IP string. We start at index zero, our pointer, our pointer of where, where, um, where we're building, our build pointer is at index zero. We pass in the path and we pass in the segment we're working on. We're gonna be working on segment zero, one, two, and three. We're indexing off zero, we have four segments, zero, one, two, three. This is the function that is going to take snapshots of our IP. Let me move out of the way. So you saw that this was our driver. So you see, snapshot IP, these are the arguments. So remember, the three keys to recur, the three keys to backtracking. Our, 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 our goal, our constraints, and our choice. Our choice, our constraints, and our goal. What is, our, our goal defines our base case. Our base case catches our answers. Our base case catches our answers, or it cuts off a dead path. It tells us, it's when we overshoot. It's either gonna catch answers or overshoot. When do we catch the answer? When we've generated four segments and our builder index is at the end of the string. So when do we kill a path? When do we cut off an overshot path? When we have, if we have four segments but we haven't built to the end of the string, we have not exhausted all possibilities. That is not a valid decomposition. If we have reached the end of, end of the string but we don't have four sec sub segments, we haven't finished the problem. We can't just stop there. We need to backtrack. We, we need to kill that path. We cannot go far, further with it. We need to return. And yes, the style may be bad. Yes, there are a lot of return statements. This is a leak code answer that I found and kind of refined to um, shape this way. But let's just focus on the concepts, not exactly like the, the style here. Now, this is our base case. This is what's going to catch all the possibilities that we generate down here. So as you can see, we take our iteration from a length of one to a length of three, and we ensure that we have not overshot the string. We ensure that the builder index plus the length is not past the string, so we don't index out of bounds. As we can see, we take our snapshot, we take our substring of the string from the builder index to the builder index plus the length. So our builder index tells us where we are in our building, it tells us where we are in our iteration. So we take the snapshot, we turn it into an integer, we switch from string to integer, and then we, we check our constraints. We check our constraints and we see, is this greater than 255 or do we have a leading zero? If either is the case, break, because that breaks our constraints that we talked about before. Don't explore that path, it's not going to yield a correct answer. Cut it off right now and continue the iteration. Don't make that choice. And then our choice. This is a very key thing. I got this from, I, I saw this one YouTube video by um, a, some Stanford lecturer. He talked about 
he talked about permu permuting a string. We'll do a video on that. It's all about whenever we're doing an exploration with like depth for search or doing like a backtracking thing, it's all about choosing, exploring, and then unchoosing. Choose, explore, unchoose. Choose, explore, unchoose what you chose. What is our choice? Our choice is, okay, we generated our snapshot, we turned it into an integer, we validated it. It's a correct snapshot. Now we need to add it to our path and explore further. How do we explore further? Okay, add it to our path, and then our recursion will continue exploring. We just pass in the same thing for these parameters. What needs to change? Now we're not working on segment zero anymore. We're working on the next segment. We're working on segment plus one. That's why we say segment plus one, working on the next segment, and we advance our builder index by the length of the snapshot we took. So if, if, if our snapshot is looking at index zero and our snapshot is length three, we need to be looking at index zero plus three, index three, zero, one, two, that's our first snapshot, and then index three is where we need to continue our building. So this, this is it. This is the, this is how you do it. This is how backtracking problems pan out. If you look at my end queens video, it's a great example of this. It's all about building our driver. Our base case is our goal. Our constraints limit our search path. Our choice tells us how to continue our recursion and explore as long as we define our policy correctly. Recursion is all about defining the recursion and trusting it to get to the goal that you define in your base case. As long as we do it like this, this, this is how you do it. All right, so for the time and space complexities, let's think about what Big O really means. Big O talks about how an algorithm's speed or its space, when we're talking time and space complexity, scale as an input gets very, very large. So when we're thinking about IP address decompositions, how big can our input really be? Like each subsection only can be at max three, characters long. So at max we're going to have a raw string of 12 characters because we have four three length subsections. But the thing is there is a limited amount of IP addresses. So this is a constant value. So big O is not about a certain value. It's about a behavior of a graph as input as as input scales. So we have a constant value of IP addresses. So therefore our time complexity is slowly going to increase but then it's gonna hit a wall and, and its tail behavior, which is what Big O really looks at, its tail behavior is going to be flat. That's why it's constant. It, it becomes constant at a certain point because we hit the wall of the amount of IP addresses there are. Our algorithm is going to hit a wall in terms of time. And Big O is all about upper bounding time or space. So that's why we have constant time. A along the same lines, we have constant space because as we only can have IP, a raw IP string a certain length and a certain amount of decompositions from that string and eventually we hit a wall. So that's why time and space are constant for this problem. Whether you do it the iteration way with the for loops or the backtracking way, fundamentally what's going on here is we're going to have constant time and space because we're going to hit a wall because we have a limited amount of IP addresses. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, subscribe, like this video, share. This channel is all about empowering engineers to do better on the interview. I'm going to say this a million times, but this is this is why I do this every day. Yes, not many people watch now, but my my I don't know if this is a passion, but I want to see other people succeed in the interview where a year ago I had no idea what I was doing and I had to teach myself and prepare. My, the, the point of this channel is to give back and to, to help others prepare, help other engineers prepare. So that is what this is all about and I hope that's right.